In this video we'll see a simulated engagement, but first we need to learn a little about the Bloodhound Mark II missile. The Bloodhound Mark II was a semi-active radar guided missile, which honed onto the radar reflections from the target, employing the Doppler principle. It could also switch automatically to passive homing onto a jamming source. The missile was a 7.6 metre long monoplane, weighing 2,358 kilograms whilst on the launcher and 1,225 kilograms after boost motor separation. Flight electrical power was provided by eight thermal batteries, which were fired a few seconds before launch. A ram air turbine drove a turbo pump to provide hydraulic power for the wing and receiver dish control systems. A second turbo pump provided high pressure fuel for the ramjets. Kerosene fuel was stored in two 90 kg bladders. The missile was boosted from the launcher by four solid fuel rocket motors, each developing 11,339 kg of thrust. The boost motors accelerated the missile to Mach 2 in 4 seconds, after which they separated. Two Rolls-Royce Thor ramjets situated above and below the rear fuselage propelled the missile at Mach 2.5 for the remainder of the flight. The ramjets each developed 3,175kg thrust. The wings were locked during the boost phase and the missile flew a ballistic trajectory. The wings were unlocked shortly after boost motor separation. The radar housed the receiving dish that could be slewed 45 degrees in any direction. The missile acquired the target at the end of the boost phase of its flight. To accomplish this, the dish, which had a narrow field of view, was oriented before launch so as to be looking at the target at the end of boost. A gyroscope stabilised the dish during missile manoeuvres. Prior to launch, the guidance receiver was primed to search for the predicted Doppler shifted target echo. Towards the end of the boost phase, the homing head would lock on and automatically track the target. The missile used the twist and steer control principle, moving the two wings differentially for roll control and together for pitch control. One of four climb cruise trajectories could be preset before launch. At a predetermined time before interception, the missile was commanded to leave the cruise program and steer a proportional navigation course to the target. A radar proximity fuse triggered warhead detonation as the missile passed near to the target. Detonation produced a rapidly expanding ring of steel rods that was able to cleave the target. The following video shows a simulated engagement of a non-jamming approaching target. The radar is switched from its current state of readiness to on. When an engagement is imminent, the missiles are selected for preparation. Each selected missile completes a 47 second run up sequence. Before firing, electrical and hydraulic power is provided by the launcher. A small hydraulic accumulator in the missile is charged to provide hydraulic power for the first few seconds of flight. The regular clicking that can be heard in the background is from the timer unit, which controls the sequencing units for missile preparation and firing.
The sensor operations sensor passes target coordinates to the engagement controller, who enters them via his keyboard. Soon after target acquisition, the track is established and target data is displayed on the P display. The track target can also be heard as a tone. The jamming display shows that the radar is locked to the target skin echo and no jamming is present. The firing circuits are closed and the missiles are switched from reload to available. The engagement controller checks with the sector operations centre that the correct target is being tracked and the engagement may continue. The computer makes missile and launcher adjustments up to the instant of launch. The missile receiving dish is positioned so as to be looking at the target at the end of boost phase. The launcher is positioned similarly, to point where the target will be seen at the end of boost. The missile receiver is primed to the predicted Doppler frequency at the end of boost. And the climb cruise trajectory is best suited to the engagement geometry is set. The signal to noise level increases as target range decreases until the signal to noise inhibit lifts and free to fire is displayed. The fire button is pressed as the target crosses the missile engagement zone boundary at a range of 60 miles. The computer starts the launch sequence on the first ready missile and it leaves the launcher 7 seconds later. At the end of the boost phase, the homing head locks onto the target echo and the missile begins to fly the preset climb cruise trajectory and pitch while steering a proportional navigation course towards the target in azimuth. The computer generates tones to prompt the engagement controller to update the missile Doppler memory via the command link. If necessary, the engagement controller can also switch the missile receiver to the mode best suited to the prevailing jamming conditions. At approximately 45 seconds before interception, the computer commands mode 4 to switch out the climb cruise program. The missile then steers a fully proportional navigation course to the target. A few seconds before interception, the missile enters the radar beam. It can be seen as a spike on the left hand Doppler trace and heard as a high pitched tone. Moments later, warhead detonation is seen as a burst of noise on the Doppler trace and the target echo disappears. We've just seen a simulated engagement on a non jamming target. In reality, the attackers would probably have used jamming tactics in an attempt to confuse the radar, in which case the engagement controller's skill, in conjunction with the countermeasure facilities available, would largely determine the success of the engagement.